Hello, everybody, and welcome back once more to Anime Yay or Nay. I am the Outback Al. I'm Hot for Justice. I'm Chibi Noob. I'm NV Jitters. I'm Tyrion Cosplay. And I'm Cozy. And I want to say real quick, welcome back, Gav. Good to hear from you yeah! again. <laughs> been a minute. Yeah, it has been a minute. <laughs> How you been? Busy. I can tell. Tired. Feel that. <laughs> Well, you came back for a good month. It's the month of love, or weirdly enough at this point, friendship, I guess. Yeah! So, yeah, we watched uh, Kimi ni... Kim God damn it. Kimi, Kimi no, no Todo to to There's yep. no no, it's a ni. Ni. If it makes you feel any better, just say the English title. It's a lot easier. From me to you. They did say it a couple times. I did notice yeah. that. Title so, drop. <laughs> yeah, so this... This... Chibi lied to yeah. me. I was told this was going to be the girl from the ring in a dating show, and it was not. And I am very disappointed. <laughs> Honestly, I just really like it because it's cute. And I like it because it's less about the romance and more about friends. That was nice. But it is. I will say that it's a very cute show, yes. I was just expecting more horror shenanigans, I guess. I mean, I think episode one was good for me. But I feel like, I don't know, she scares people enough that I'm just like, this is a funny gag, but also, you know. So, who's seen this before? Because this is my first time, I hadn't really known anything about it. I saw it before, I was introduced to it by my roommate in college. It was like, somewhat of a popular one from when she was, like, in high school, which this came out in 2009, so would have been when I was like a freshman in high school mm. but it was I enjoyed this this was like sort of a refreshing sort of take on like a shoujo romance um because it was more about her being shy and like developing friendships while also like her being super dumb about the boy <laughs> and the boy also being super dumb <laughs> I don't think he's as dumb as her but we can get to that later I saw six, like, episodes of it in the past. I forget why I didn't watch any more of it. I, like, honestly can't remember. And I don't... I think I was in college when I watched it. I want to say, like, freshman or sophomore year of college. Yeah, I couldn't remember exactly how many episodes I saw. I knew it wasn't that many, but I just checked my anime list account and it says six episodes is what i've seen but i went back and like rewatched it from the beginning for this ep like podcast episode so how far did you get uh only watched the first three it's just a nice refresher yeah i'd seen clips of it because it was very big at the time but i also was not really a romance anime fan so i never watched it that's fair but like this was kind of it came out during, like, a really big boom of a lot of slice-of-life romance stuff. Oh, yeah. Big time. I'd never heard of it. Yeah, okay. I've, I've heard of it. This is my first time watching it, and I'm going to be all over the place with my opinions because I <laughs> I went ahead and watched the first season of the show, which is 24 episodes. So, yeah, you would think that I would love the show, and I do. I love... A lot of the main characters, I like a lot of the stuff in it, but it's also very frustrating for me at the same time, and it makes me realize that, hmm, maybe I'll never get into Fruits Basket, because <coughs> there's a lot of melodramatic shit that happens later on in the show that makes me go, why? Just speak your mind, damn it. I know your high schoolers and high schoolers are stupid, but come on, just, just speak, damn it, speak. That's because my then there's no plot, but I'd prefer them to not be speaking if they're not together rather than in an actual relationship. But yeah. I digress. Fruits Basket isn't really like a romance. It's really like a character study on all of the characters in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's... It's more of a romantic comedy in the beginning, and then once it gets to, like, midway through the series, it's like, nope, we're gonna make you cry a lot. <laughs> yeah, well, regardless, I, I, I went, obviously, I've enjoyed a lot of aspects, and I said this off mic last week, that this show has one of my favorite narrative tropes in it, and that's why I've been continuing to watch it. But there's some things where it's, you know, melodramatic, you know, typical romance stuff that you know usually i don't mind in anime for how much anime i've seen 
but there's some things that kind of just drive me a little irky, but obviously you guys have only probably seen the first three episodes for this podcast, so. <laughs> I feel like you need the payoff of the relationship, yeah. which I know doesn't come until towards the end of the entire series. It's not even, well, it's not even the relationship stuff that bothers me the most. It's mainly just, well, I don't want to say it's too much, but it's not even so much the romance stuff. It's just more of lack of communication in some areas with some of the characters. I mean, you're not going to have like a storyline without the, the lack of communication. I hate to say it, but a lot of the romance genre is literally like miscommunications or lack thereof. It's an unfortunate yep. thing, but it is a majority of what the, drives the plot lines for these stories. It's the drama. Yeah, that too. <laughs> so I watched. Uh, so I watched ten episodes of this just today. Okay. I uh, oh, you liked it that much? <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> I, uh, the, let's just say I got off work early. And I put it on while I was working on some other stuff. Turns out I had a lot of things to work on. So, you know, I was able to just let it roll, essentially. But, uh, yeah, why don't we get into it? Main plot is girl looks like the girl from the ring. And uh, everyone thinks she's the girl from the ring. But she's not. She's nice. She's a sweet girl. But she's also a dumbass. Um, <laughs> I would and... like to <laughs> offer, instead of dumbass, Naive? autistic. That too. This is a show about an autistic girl or her ADHD boyfriend. Uh, you know, I don't Love have a, a license to diagnose those sort of things, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go with dumbass. Um, As an autistic, <laughs> she's autistic. Sure, that's fine. She's as, somewhere on the spectrum. As someone with mild ADHD, you know what? I'll say, sure, boyfriend's got ADHD. <laughs> um, yeah, so. It, this is kind of it's it is very much slice of life. It's you know what's our our social problem of the day kind of thing, and how are we going to overcome it while not looking like a horror movie character? I was going to say villain. She's just not villainous enough for me to say that. She's she's kind of a little sweetheart, isn't she? Yeah, but she just doesn't understand social cues. That's that's why I was saying naive. Um, to be fair, I feel like part of that is just a result of just, she hasn't had a lot of social interaction because everyone's terrified of her, but. That's, yeah. that's honestly how yeah. I sort of interpreted it too, at least upon first viewing. Yeah. Sort of like a weird kind of arrested development kind of deal. Well, um, it also didn't help too that when she was in elementary school, her friend accidentally got her name confused. Sadako yeah. to Sadako, and then it, and then like it any bad, <laughs> like any bad nickname, it just sticks with you. <laughs> oh yeah, we all been there at some point. Yeah, yeah. and also as someone who not a lot of people talk to in school, I can kind of relate to her a little bit. <laughs> well, did you look like you were from the ring? I mean, I was not when that she scary, had longer but hair. <laughs> a little bit. My bangs were in my face all the time, but uh, let's just say it was cause for people to not really talk to me very much. <laughs> mm, well, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, they got to know you later, and that was the whole point, right? You got us. No. <laughs> That's fine. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about us. <laughs> We're good. Are we got good? Oh, God. It's the miscommunications, just like in this show. I gotta be real. It's my least favorite part of this. I Like, <laughs> last week we watched... What God? What was it called? I'm sorry, I'm blanking. Horamia. Horamia. Yeah, Horamia. Yeah. And, it was, and I was like, oh, this is so refreshing genuine communication between people like hey there's no miscommunication because we're gonna fucking talk about it and now now i feel like i'm back in the pit of oh god that you're gonna drag this out forever well al you well al you watched the first 10 episodes so you saw the mini arc from episodes four to six yeah and it didn't deal with any romance it dealt with rumors and did yeah. that not want to pull your yeah. hair out like the entire time? It's like just talk to them, damn it, bro. Just it it, talk to it them. felt so much longer than three episodes. I gotta be real with you. Oof. I had to drama, suspense, pacing. I don't like. <laughs> yeah. I, I was that part I is, I, I'm gonna be real with you. I'm gonna be real with you. I had to start putting it at at, at, at like uh, 1.5 speed to get through it. Because it was like, I needed to get to the end of the arc just to know what happened. But at the same time, I'm like, we can hurry this up a little bit. <laughs> I do want to know how 
anyone heard the rumors and heard it came from Sawako and was like, oh yeah, definitely. Somebody talked to her enough for her to talk shit on someone else. It took him four yeah. fucking episodes just to say that out loud. I'm like, think of that in episode one. Like, I was, I was, I was, they bait and switched me so hard and I was a little pissed off at it because, like, yeah, they leave it on the cliffhanger. I'm like, oh, there's no way they're going to believe that. And then the second that the next episode starts, is like, they don't believe it. But then they do. I'm like, yeah, you had it right yeah. the first time. Yeah. The fuck. I mean, and it's yeah. I don't know. The rumor plot line just it's kind of just high school. Like I hate to bring down the mood for everything, but uh when you're a quiet girl who's like, you know, not really talking to people and you start making friends and you may be talking to somebody who someone else has a crush on. Uh, let's just say nasty things can get said very quickly. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not doubting that in the fact that they were all being bullied by it. Mm-hmm. I'm more the the people who took the fact that someone said she was saying this and ran with it, like they weren't all fucking terrified of Salko and wouldn't listen to what she had to say at any other time. Yeah. Oh, no. No, trust me. Like, that that part, I was like, that doesn't make any sense. But it's just like, I think for them to make the story go ahead with what they wanted to do, some I, suspension of disbelief there has to be held. I gotta be real. This could have been an episode... That whole Probably. arc could have been an episode. It was just so dry. Like, what makes it worse is that I feel like I was actually, I did deal with that at one point. Not a lot, but there, I'm thinking of one specific time. I'm not going to name any names because, you know, I shouldn't. But uh, there was a person I was in contact with who told me, hey, this person that you're friends with said this. And, like, it took me 10 seconds to text that person be like, hey, did you say this? And they're like, no, I did not. I don't know what the hell this person is talking about. I'm like, yeah, no, I thought so because it didn't sound anything like you. And the thing was resolved in 30 seconds. And I'm like, granted, I was not in high school. I was a little bit older than that. But it's just one of those like, guys, communicate. Can you can you learn from the people in the last series that we watched? <laughs> well, like, I get it. Not everybody is, you know... I understand that, believe me, I've been nervous to say things to people before. I can get where there's some trepidation. I, I, I am willing to believe that, but there was a certain point where, you know, like, even her friends were, you know, de- not even, like, they didn't even care about the rumors, and yeah. they were like, yeah, we don't believe that, you know, Sawako it did all that. So it's like, good. That's yeah. refreshing. But then towards the end of that arc, they were like, well... Is she really doing that? Because it's the whole, oh, the, you, you overheard them saying, oh, you're not my friends, but they didn't hear the whole thing where it's like they feel much more than that. So it's just like, oh, uh, the forced misunderstanding trope. <laughs> yep. I mean, again, it's one of the tropes of the genre, unfortunately. Yeah. My, my also, your high schoolers, you're going to just take what you hear and not bother to think to ask. Like, True. I'm sorry, but high schoolers don't always think things through. <laughs> Sometimes they're a little dumb. <sighs> that it's just was not my experience. Okay, the jock girl. Like, I can see her being, like, a little too intimidated to ask, but the other one? Yeah. Like, she did not, like, come off at any point. It's the type of girl who would be afraid to, like, speak her mind about it. Yeah. Oh, no, I know. Again, I'm just, I'm not saying that, like, your guys are wrong. They should be talking, but it's just, like... Unfortunately, it's just you can't have like a story without drama and yeah. not communicating. <laughs> I, I don't conflict somewhere. I get it. I'm just saying, like, I'm not saying it's necessarily bad drama or bad conflict. I'm saying, God, it took them so fucking long to get through that. Again, yeah, it could have been like cut down majorly, but also this is not part of the three episodes we watched. No, yo, you're right. It's not. It's. All right. So what happened with those three episodes? It's the it's the test of courage thing. That was actually mm-hmm. I like that. I like that whole thing because it's kind of leaning into your the basic premise that they kind of started with with Sa- uh, Sawako. She looks like Sadako from the ring. So test of courage. She's gonna be the ghost. And but it's like allowing her to interact, but also. Yeah, yeah. I think we mentioned she's a little socially awkward. She doesn't always understand social cues and that. So she's like, oh, everyone wants me to be this. 
I'm going to disappoint yeah. them if I'm not. I'm like, oh, honey, you don't get it. But I love that you're just trying. That's great. <laughs> she had fun. She did. Yeah. She I think did everyone did. And I think that was like, it kind of started like, we'll say like, as things go, it does get a little bit easier for her to interact with people outside of, of uh, Mr. I Got a Crush on You. But, you know, that's kind of where it starts. And I do like that. As slow as it is, you do see progression for her, and it is nice. Yeah. Also, um, I made a comment to Cece, and I just kind of want to get everyone else's opinions. Do you think only city schoolers do that test of courage? Because I'm trying to think of, like, the country kids who live outside of the cities, Um, who maybe have to, like, navigate, like, the mountains and stuff just in their day-to-day life. Well, Being this... like, oh no, we gotta walk in the forest at night. Well, I mean, this is set in uh, Hokkaido, which is less city-oriented, I think. Mm-hmm. So, they're I mean, they're in that's... the city, though. Well, they're in a city, but like, they, the test of courage was also in the middle of a forest somewhere. So, yeah, that's why I'm saying, like, city kids go out to a forest. I and mean, there's it's other. Dark, they're like, ah. Well, hold on, because I think there's actually some other places. I've seen them do this in other shows where it's like, we're going to go to an abandoned hospital or go into the school at night or stuff like that. So those are also okay. options. So the country kids just got to up the spook factor. <laughs> I yeah, think it's they just more got a better fact places. Of like, what's the most scary place that's nearby that we can hold this sort of event in? Yeah, you can do it anywhere as long as you got like one creepy place. Yeah, no, I'm just saying, like, the city kids are like, oh no, dark forest. And the country kids are like, I have to walk this uphill both ways in the snow every day to get to school. This isn't I scary. Mean, <laughs> I mean, well, hold on. It's also summertime. It's the spookiest time of the year for Japan. <laughs> so technically for them, it's probably a little bit more heightened because summer season is actually go season. August in particular. Um, yeah, yep. America has Shark Week. They have Ghost Season. <laughs> Can we combine that's, the two? That's probably the dumbest thing I've said today. <laughs> I want Ghost Shark Season. Ghost Shark. Okay. Okay. You know what? I think you just pitched a sci-fi movie and I'm here for it. Ooh. <laughs> okay. As long as it's not on sci-fi, the oh. TV channel, because then no. we're going to get some Sharknado ass shit. Uh, yeah. That's what I'm looking forward to. I mean, it sounds like the best remake of Jaws 4, The Revenge. I, guys, I'm sorry, I don't mean to derail the conversation, but I, you said Ghost Shark, it just made me think of the creature from Tremors 4, which is basically like the ghost squid thing. <laughs> I gotta rewatch that. <laughs> yeah. I think sorry. you played a dating sim where you date Such ghosts. Such a good series. That's something sure. they've been showing on uh, sci-fi like every night for the past couple weeks, so. Okay. As they <laughs> should. From like, <laughs> Velociraptors to Ghost Squid. I don't Not know. Not Velociraptors. <laughs> yeah, that In was Tremors Velociraptors. Three, they were like little dinosaur thingies. That's Tremors 2. They were. Was it two? No. Yes. Okay. Two is the one where they're the heat seekers and they climb on top of each other to build a ladder. Okay. Sounds to me like we all need to rewatch <laughs> all six Tremors movies because they're basically anime. <laughs> they are. Are they on the list? Uh, yes. Oh, 100%. Sorry. Seven. Tremors. There was another one in 2020. Forgot about Ooh, that. One. What? Yeah, Shrieker Island. Tremors is one of my favorite movie series. <laughs> oh yeah, it's fucking, it's fucking fantastic. It's a, oh my god. Hey, let's spray each other down in fire extinguisher foam to like. Yes. That lives in my head rent free. <laughs> I'm like, I learned something. <laughs> I have no idea what the fuck you guys are talking about. <laughs> if you come away from anything from this episode about Kimi no Todoke, about the girl who looks like the girl from the ring and is trying to overcome her social anxiety, it's that Tremors is one of the best monster movie series of all time. <laughs> and Chibi's like, I don't mean to derail the conversation. Like, I'll talk Tremors anytime. I, I love that shit. Um, but yeah, we should get back to the subject at hand. We can cover Tremors at another day. Yes. We can do a whole video of it. Video. Multiple. Podcast. Multiple videos. I want one per movie. Yes. There was, but, uh, there was a comment I was going to make about this compared to Horamiya. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So I noticed that they're both like um, popular, like student, be friends, outcast student, mm-hmm. and then they fall in love. Yeah. And I absolutely love that trope for reasons. But um, it's just like, I noticed this is like kind of the opposite situation where instead of like it's a popular girl and like an outcast guy, it's like popular guy and outcast girl. And I thought that was kind of cool just to like so... reverse it from one week to the other. Oron? <laughs> Oron! Yes. I was yeah. going to go with She's All That, but I know American rom-coms more than I do Japanese ones. Also, Watamote. <laughs> Watamote, yes. Wada Wada? Yeah. Okay, but why was everybody so obsessed with this guy? Like, he walked into the classroom and they all cheered. White He's red. He is friendly. That is why. <laughs> also, yeah. like... It is, like, a really popular trope. Who knows if this happens in real life where, like, they choose, like, one guy of the school and they're like, that's Prince Charming. Like I Everybody get, wants him. I get liking him, but everybody was, like, obsessed with him. I mean... He's Regina George. Oh. Ooh. Oh, Regina right. George isn't nice. No. Yeah. No, she's well, not if Regina nice. George was nice. You guys ever see John Tucker Must Die? I've heard of it. Mm-hmm. Yes. He's John Tucker. No. Watch that. I actually really like that one. I'm sorry we keep talking about like other movies that we really enjoy with this one. No, it's okay. It's uh no, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the audience. I'm not apologizing ah. to you, Chibi. I never do that. <laughs> no. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh yeah, no, sometimes yeah, you just got some people are just they're just really likable. I don't yeah. know. It's like maybe it's an attitude thing, maybe it's a this, maybe it's a that, but of course he's just into the girl who uh, doesn't smile for anybody, but when she does smile, she's hot. Minus the first part about what I'm about to say. He wanted that big titty goth GF, but it's Japan, so no big titty. Hey, now, let's not stereotype. And also, you haven't seen a lot of recent anime, because, yeah, there's there's high school girls in anime nowadays where their biology would not work like that. No, that's nothing new. Yeah, I'm like, that's been a thing for a very long time, my friend. <laughs> But anyway, so we covered episode one. Yeah. Episode two. Yeah. She found a puppy. Yeah. yeah. That, that puppy has not come back yet. Pedro Martinez. Pedro Martinez. <laughs> so I, funny. I'm not a big baseball fan. I don't know what to say about it. I do know the name. I mean, he was a big Marty baseball Chandler. player when that, when that, when that, when the show came out. I had a feeling. And then she's like Maru for short. Like, yeah. that is not the most basic white bread name to name a fucking male dog. Maru, it's cute, though. For Does people it... who don't know, it's just boy. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was but it's a cute name. name. Honestly, on, when they said Maru, all I could think of was Maru the cat that <laughs> likes to dive in the boxes. <laughs> his name oh is my Maru. God. <laughs> I love him. The Scottish Fold. Yeah. Yes. All I'm thinking and, all I'm thinking about now is is the guy referring to it as Morrow, so it's boy, so I'm just thinking of a uh, god of war with his son. Boy. 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 <laughs> boy. Boy. Daddy. Look out, boy! Daddy. Mm, orange juice. Mm. Mm. Boy. Dangerous boy. <laughs> yeah, no, the dog is just called Boy. Come here, Boy. <laughs> I mean, I mean, not to uh, not to sidetrack again, but in The Walking Dead, Daryl named his dog Dog, so it, mm. it it's like poetry; it rhymes. Hey, he's named his Hellhound Spot. True. I I nickname my cat Cat Girl. Like I legit call her Cat Girl more than I call her her actual name. Okay. Cat is in your cat's name, though. Yeah, I guess so. It's kind of like Maru. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> Honestly, um, Katina makes me think of Star Wars. Can't believe you just doxed Gab's cat. Oops. It's a cat. <laughs> <laughs> and it's Katina, not Cantina. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, my I cat's know. already been doxxed, your, so... Your cat's not boy, it's bar. My cat. <laughs> my cat is handsome, dude. 
handsome boy. <laughs> Your cat is Dean. He is Dean. He is I Deanie Bobini. Like most of the time, you're like, Dean, stop. <laughs> At least when we're recording. <laughs> oh, no, I call oh, him yeah. Dean all the time. It's just, it's a lot shorter than calling him Houdini. Hmm. And he'll respond to Dean, so it's fine. Anyway. <laughs> I feel like we keep, like, jumping off of here because there's so little plot to talk about. It's more just emotions and, you know, the struggles of trying to, like, you know, talk to people when you don't know how to talk to people. I got I got a bit of a thing. I feel like, and this might have been a dub issue, because I watched the dub. Um, okay. I feel like the dialogue was so overly dramatic in the early episodes. It got better as it um, kept going. And I don't know if that I... was just an issue, but... The sub has a lot of dramatic moments, too. A lot of... Uh internal monologues by Salako later on in the first season. Yeah. I mean, she has pr- plenty of internal monologues in the beginning as well, but it's more like her being like, oh, oh my gosh, they're talking to me, which yeah. I'm just like, girl, I feel you. <laughs> also, certain languages do just kind of have like, not flares for dramatics, but like intonation is a huge part of the language itself. Yeah, I've, I've found, like, for sometimes with Japanese, if I'm watching dub or sub, or if, if it's sub, or if it's a direct dub translation, the language is usually a lot f- more flowery than I think most people would speak in English. And I think that was just kind of what was going on here, where it's like, if they're doing a direct translation, a lot of times it's just going to be like, okay, yeah, this is, this is going to be very... Hmm, no one talks yeah, like this. Like, <laughs> no one I know talks like this. You gotta well, keep in mind, a lot of countries look at America and they're like, because of how we speak, we're very blunt and not very emotive. They think we're rude. Yeah, yeah we're, well, we're like, also, uh, what's her face in the show? The one Yoshida? who doesn't... Yeah. Um, is she the delinquent one or the whore? Yes. <laughs> She's the delinquent. I like... We didn't get to it because we were only supposed to watch three, but I like one of the early lines in episode four. They like they're recapping the rumor thing, and she's like, "I heard she was like with a hundred different guys in middle school. You think there's a hundred guys who could satisfy me? Are you crazy?" I'm like, <laughs> 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 like lead into it. That's I, they're probably the two of them together are probably my favorite characters in the show. I think. Well, yeah. I was gonna say for someone who's watched. All of season one, the biggest thing I love about the show is the five main characters. I love, I love Sawako, Kazuhaya, uh, Ayane, um, Chizuru, and Ryu, mm. uh, her friend. Okay, like no, I love Ryu the five just of them wanted together. to like sleep. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Yeah. I probably relate to him the most because of that. <laughs> well, sleeping <laughs> bum food off of them again. I relate so hard. <laughs> But, like, I love the five of them together. I love their interactions. And I love specifically how, you know, um, Ayane and Chizuru bonded and became Salako's, you know, true friends. Like, I mentioned earlier, one of my favorite tropes in any media is when a shy character or a character that's facing, like, a mental block overcomes that trauma. That Like, that's one of my favorite tropes. No matter how many times I've seen it, it I get emotional about it. Like, Mm -hmm. that's why A Silent Voice is one of my favorite movies because of that. So, I love, uh, I love when Salako eventually opens up more and she becomes true friends with them. So, like, that, that's heartwarming and that's the main reason why I've kept watching this show. I'm gonna bring this full circle on you. I think you'd actually really enjoy Fruits Basket. (laughs) Because the whole thing is about all of the characters overcoming that mental hurdle. I just thought it was a love triangle in the later seasons. Like, no, it's just not. A it's not. really not. You know what, Envy? No. I'm also going to throw out a recommendation. Do not watch Fruit Baskets. It was boring as fuck, and you're going to hate it. <laughs> now, you have to watch it and see who's right. <laughs> oh. I, I did I not watch it. I think I like watch probably knows a little bit about the premise to know it's not really that boring. I watched yeah. like half of the first season, I think. I or maybe the whole first season. I can't remember. It's been a while. I just was like, eh. Did you watch the original anime or the new one? Oh, the yeah, the original one was pretty bad. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hey. So 
my recommendation stands. I do not have any opinion on the new one as I have not seen it. I was going to say, there's a definitely like a difference between the old one and the new one. But as someone who is like a manga only person, I will say like tone shift definitely makes a difference for how you're experiencing the story from the beginning to the end. Yeah, I was going to say read the manga. <laughs> yeah. I don't know anything about the show, but I, I would like to ask if Fruits Basket is the name of a collective of gay people. Is that the term for it? <laughs> Sounds uh, a little derogatory, but I don't know. No. Could be a good bar. Google just answered the question for her. And the answer was? I don't know. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, here's what I know. So you guys are recommending the manga of Fruits Basket over the anime. Really, though, this this show makes me want to watch and possibly later get an adaptation of the manga that I mentioned last week. Uh, it's Saruko-san and Saruko-chan, which is what the comic I mentioned was, where uh, Saruko from The Ring, she's doing her ring thing with uh, cursed people and whatnot, but she, one of the people who gets cursed is this little girl who's also named Sadako, and she decides, well, I'm not going to kill this one. And the little girl's like, hey, you're the girl from the TV. You know YouTube's the thing now. We should make a YouTube channel together. Yes. And I'm like, That's you know so what? Adorable. Fuck yes. Let's let's add adorable chibi cuteness with actual horror. <laughs> oh. adapt overcome, and I'm pretty sure the ring did that already. I'm sure, but still. I don't know. This thing. Did anyone read the manga of this? No. Uh, no. It was more of like a shonen jump, I think. Uh, kind of thing. We're like, more than uh, likely you mean, you people mean, You mean shoujo? Shoujo jump. But, okay, I thought you said shonen jump for a second. I was like, whoa, that's a completely different genre. It is, but like, shonen jump did have like romance stuff in it sometimes. Yeah, it was just also violent. Yeah, one of those <laughs> like magazines that published yeah. chapters... Yeah, of so a whole bunch was, of different ones. Uh, sh so it was published by Shueisha, um, which I is probably a just a shoujo romance publishing magazine. Nope, Shueisha makes uh, it includes Shonen Jump, Jump SQ, V Jump, a whole bunch of other jumps, and then okay. something about Viz Media. Uh, the specific magazine was uh, Besatsu Margaret, which uh, is a shoujo manga. Yeah, magazine. so it's like Shueisha is more their just main publisher. Betsu Besatsu Margaret's their imprint. So there like DC Comics and then Action Comics. A little bit, yeah. But not Superman. DC Comics is redundant. Anyways, it definitely like it feels like that kind of format. Uh I know a bunch of people, at least on like Twitter. We're raving about, um, I'm sorry, X. <laughs> We're raving it's about- Twitter. No, it's Just call it Twitter. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the third season of, um, Kimi ni Tudoke coming out, um. Oh, yeah, because, yeah, like, that uh, came Netflix. out, like, in what, 2020? No, the third yeah. season looks like it's coming out in 2024. The last season yeah. came out in 2023, though. That's a, uh, well. Oh, no, wait, sorry. A live-action series came out last yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah, everything's got a fucking yeah. live action adaptation. I mean, it doesn't need probably one. Not a, it's probably not a big budget, so no. <laughs> okay, I'm looking at the poster. That girl don't look nearly creepy enough. Listen, Japan does a lot of live actions, and they're generally pretty good. Maybe we'll have to watch those at some point. When you think about it, they are basically it's anime, and that's actually the first time that my <laughs> that sentence actually works. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Tremors. It's basically anime. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so the second episode's about changing seats. Yeah. Which is how she acquires her group of friends. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, and, and again, you know, Kazuhaya, you know, going up, it's like, you know, he didn't want, nobody wanted to sit next to her. And then he did the first move and the other two girls, you know, took the initiative and then Ryu just like, I don't give a shit. I'm just going to sit wherever I want. <laughs> Ryu just wanted to sit in the back left. Yep. So he yeah. could sleep. This is, yeah. It had nothing to do with her. <laughs> this is kind of an out-of-context spoiler, but, like, Ryu later in the season just becomes a whole mood because he goes to a shrine, and all he wants is Amazake, that drink that they have for New Year, 
And so literally, like everyone's trying to plan this certain scheme that they're doing. And meanwhile, all he's just wanted, all he wants is a Mazake. And he just keeps saying that. And it cracked me up the entire time. Dude, he's, a, he's a simple man with simple needs. I, vi- I can vibe with that. I would also like to bring up uh, towards the beginning of the episode, after the whole dog thing where her and Kazahaya come in wet, she buys them milk is like a thank you gift that day. And there were just some girls in the class who really didn't care about any of the rumors around Sabako. Like the girls came back in and they're like, oh, who left this for us? And the other girls in the class were like, oh, Sabako left that. And for a bunch of kids who were all supposed to be deathly afraid of her, that was a little weird, especially followed up by the seat change. Where everyone's like, oh my god, you'll get sick if you sit near her. I'm going to throw out there, because I did watch a little bit further, that some people are not afraid of her. Some people just don't find her very approachable because she got a bit of, like, resting bitch face. Yeah, that's not later on. That's literally in the third episode, Al. Well, there you go. (laughs) So you answered your own question. Why were you confused by why they weren't, like, terrified of her? Because they were all, like, when they were doing the seat change... Every single person was like, we are not going to interact. Like, we don't want anything to do with her. But they were very, like, carefree and unaffected by saying, like, oh, yeah, that was a nice present Salvaco gave you instead of, oh, you're, like, cursed now because she left you something. I gotta be real with you. It might just be that those two characters, because I think they're there a lot. I think they're just sheeple, and they just go with whatever the group is doing. So when the group's not there, they're fine. But when the group's around, I don't know, man. They just they just go with it. It was just like they a weird suck. tone shift. And like I feel like that really would have been like a nice little like addition of depth to the characters to have. Oh, not everyone is like viewing her as unapproachable. Some people are just normal with her, but because she doesn't understand social cues, she still thinks nobody likes her. Mm. Was kind of to like go off of that. I was kind of surprised that they didn't say like, "Don't drink that milk." Like Sadako left it. Like I kind of get what area you're coming from in that point, but uh, I think this probably just like you know an author like didn't really want to like probably go into that much depth. Like I don't know, they just didn't think about it. They needed exposition to say she left it. That was the extent it was thought about. Uh, My biggest concern was they were like Sarah collected there a while ago. I was like, wait, how how long was a while ago? How long has this milk been just sitting out on their desks? It so, was three days. <laughs> as, as, let's just say as Probably someone... the lunch period. Um, let's just say some people have a tendency to leave their milk out for longer in other countries. It is a thing. Yeah. I Gross. mean, you can leave a carton of milk out for 30 minutes. It's fine. Yeah, but it's usually not pasteurized like ours yeah same with eggs yeah that's that's probably a good point it's probably not pasteurized so it's probably okay to leave out longer yeah which was definitely like a a sort of thing like again my roommate from freshman year had a tendency to leave out milk for longer so it kind of scared me when she she would do that um oh man no because i don't think she realized there was a difference so i can kind of understand why she would do it then but oh but just as a an american who is like no the milk has to go in the fridge now (laughs) you don't get it we got weak milk over here (laughs) um actually cheebs was it her who recommended it or it was roommate you had the next year okay No, I was going to say, I think she was, she was the one who introduced it to me. And I think if my uh, roommate for the rest of college watched it, she watched it with me uh, during freshman year. I don't remember because college has been blocked out, but (laughs) yeah. Cheers, girl. Drink the Oh, yeah. No, I was like, it, it feels like thing. It did not really feel like You know, I got to keep cutting the name out, right? Sorry. Yeah. (laughs) Are you cutting it or are you, like, beeping it? You know what? That'll be funnier. Why not? (laughs) (laughs) I'm only saying her nickname. 
I'm only saying her nickname. Like, that's not her full name. Like, not, not the point. I just, I, now I'm just going to start yeah. beeping stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it did not really feel like in the wheelhouse of stuff that your other roommate would have been into. Oh, Say no. their name. I'll bleep that one. Jojo Kill a Kill. Fine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jojo Kill a Kill, Steven Universe, Gravity Falls. Yeah, all that like, yeah it didn't feel like her kind of pace i mean i'm sure if she sat down and watched it she would also enjoy this too um but i'm not sure this would be something that she would have necessarily uh sought out on her own but you know i wasn't i wouldn't have done the same thing either so well good thing we have people in our lives who expose us to Lots of things. And what a shame that we have some people in our lives who expose us to things that we never wanted to see, like Bludgeoning Angel. Uh, I was looking yeah. at, like, a... Uh, fuck. You guys have probably seen it, with the exception of, like, Elle and Envy. There's, like, a trend going around on Instagram right now. Yeah, I Where don't it see has, that. like, a list of things, and it's like, pick your top five out of it. Yep. Yeah. I think so one of a- those was Magical Girls. Okay. And mm, I, I recognized every series except for one that was just in the Japanese name. And, like, the text was so tiny I could not read any of the characters. So I went and I looked up, like, just a list of every Magical Girl series there was. was a lot. Because there was a five at the end of it. I'm like, how many Magical Girl series have a five at the end? So I was going through this list trying to find it. And why was Dokorochan on there? I was it's, distraught. Because it's technically a magical girl anime. No, it is not. She has a transformation sequence. No. What do you want? <laughs> she has I a weapon. I refuse. <laughs> okay, I think we're moving on. Yeah. We're moving on. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we've brought that up too many times in recent weeks, and I just... Let's not, you know? That's fair. So, three. do we have... I mean... I feel like we pretty much covered this all, haven't we? I mean, for the Episode most part, three, yeah. A teacher was super weird. Yeah, yeah not well, as weird as know. last week. No, yeah, true. Yes. Episode three, she smiled, and everyone was like, oh. Oh, oh yeah, she became a tutor. Yeah. But um, actually, like, that's another weird, like, cultural thing where, like, teachers actually do get involved in, like, students' relationships. Mm-hmm. Like, they can call their parents about it and, like, demand that if they're in a relationship, they break up or they have to stop seeing each other and hanging out. Feels invasive. Like, that is wild. Yeah, I don't think that would fly around here. No. I mean, they did that in my school, but that was a super senior trying to date a freshman, so I feel yeah, like creepy. that had some legality reasons. Yeah. yeah, that's creepy. But, like, they really just don't think it's weird for a teacher to, like, talk about, like, their private relationships. Like, oh, oh. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's, like, we mentioned, like, the communal kind of cultural thing over there, and I know, like, people are very invested in the schools that they went to, and I think they invest in each other's lives, I guess, through that means. I don't know, we're all, over here, we're a little more, like, separation of church and state kind of thing, so. We're all very independent. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about, well, this is going back to, like, cultural things, like, there are still, and I'm going to mention my roommate from freshman year again because she gives me more context for a lot of things. She was yeah. still in contact with a lot of people she knew from high school. Um, I think even when I was still like in college, like later on when she was no longer my roommate, but you know she would still come over and hang out sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, like I think she still talked to a lot of people that she used to know but like they hadn't seen each other in a long time and i think it's just a thing that like sometimes people just hit each other up for one reason or another um or just to catch up so i think do you want to invest in my pyramid scheme good god Um, that is the aversion over here isn't it (laughs) actually it is you know, we didn't really give the context in this episode that yeah. <laughs> Chibi's uh, roommate was Japanese. 
Yeah, well, I feel like we I'm covered sorry. that if you, couldn't, if you couldn't figure it out, but... Yeah, it's like, I've mentioned my Japanese roommate quite a few times, so... Uh, at least in, like, different episodes of the podcast, so I, like, sometimes forget to include that information. But yeah, living with her was a little... was quite interesting, considering just, like, a little bit of the cultural disconnect we both had. Honestly, when she met me, she told me, she's like, oh... It was, like, so different and interesting because, like, you know, there are just so many Americans. Like, sometimes there are a lot of Americans, I guess, like, they think that we're all real rude and blunt. But I guess she had sort of different experiences. Well, I mean, I'm rude with, and like, blunt, but whatever. Well, no, because everyone over here is, like, in comparison to Japan, everyone over here is, like, very, 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 very emotive. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, I... we all have very expressive faces, I guess. <laughs> It would have been really, really funny if it turned out she was just Canadian. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what a different cultural experience. Yeah, like, we're just a couple miles north, man. <laughs> She's not even French. She's from Montreal. Ew. Uh, <laughs> uh, Chidi, I would like to, like, also bring up, like, she was also completely the opposite because I am not very expressive, and she thought that meant I didn't like her. She, I don't think she's really used to necessarily, like, RBF. From a lot of people, at least not over here. Yeah, I have a very bad case of it. <laughs> mm. But I think because I didn't really have, at least I didn't let the RBF, for me, take over too much for freshman year. I think it took over, like, later on in college. It, and I yes. don't think it ever stopped. <laughs> it's definitely taken root since we've had to, like, get jobs and stuff. Oh, the will so to live just plummeted. <laughs> anyway. I think we need a... A, a cheerful person in our lives who's just super nice. Like, what's his face? Envy. Jose Haya. Yeah. Envy. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying, like, we have, like, a generally cheerful person who's super nice. It's Envy. Yeah, but we need someone with, like, the magic quality that's like, we don't know why you're so popular, but you are. Maybe it only exists in f fiction. <laughs> Stop saying people's fucking names. I gotta work to get rid of those. <laughs> anyway. I missed that. Uh, episode three. Are we done with episode three? I think we're done all, all together, I think. I think we pretty much uh, covered everything that we could, unless there's something else that we're missing. I don't think so. We've talked for yes, like almost means. 53 minutes. Yeah. And very little about this show. Yeah, <laughs> yes. unfortunate. Uh, so why don't we render some verdicts here? Like, I did watch ten episodes of this. It was mostly just to get to the actual plot. I think if this is the kind of thing that you like, great. It is way too slow for me. Uh, I'm gonna That's give fair. it... It's not bad. Definitely not bad. It has some things that I like about it. But I'm gonna give it a, a, a meh. Maybe a light yay on a good day, but probably a meh. I don't know that I'm gonna continue this. What about after the first three episodes? Would you have given it the same thing or? Yeah, I was going to say you've watched 10 episodes. The reason was I knew something was starting. I was like, okay, here's an actual arc. Here's an actual plot. I want to do this. I want to see this. I want to get through it. And it's just a little bit of a slog sometimes. Was That's a fair. lot better on like 1.5 speed. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> like, let's, because let's hurry this up. The only reason I like you know, ask is because I think that's the reason why I didn't continue it before was because uh, you said it lasted for like, what, three episodes, that arc? Felt a lot longer, or something but probably like that. three. Yeah. Yeah. yeah because arc, yeah. that would have been four, five, and six, and I've watched exactly six episodes, and I feel like that's probably why I stopped after, like, episode six was because I, I'm sure I felt the same way. Mm. But after watching the first three today, I want to continue it. And it's like, I almost kind of have this feeling of dread in me for the upcoming, like, next three episodes. Um, I think you might want to continue it because it did end on a cliffhanger, though. That's part of the reason. I was like, oh, hey, plot. Let's go. Let's do this. But and then they that's did. Not and why, I was, huh. That's not why. That's not. That's not why I wanted to continue it. I want to continue it because I think it's genuinely really cute. Yeah, like, maybe you like it better the second time. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I just need to 
skip the rumor arc since I've already seen it. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> like, I don't don't really remember it much, but, like, you know, now that, like, kind of refreshing like if it's as slow as it sounds maybe i'll just skip to episode seven <laughs> as bad as that sounds but well then you also get the kurume arc where you get her introduced and then you see her become a total female dog throughout most of season one so see, that's what that i was waiting blonde? for is that the blonde yeah yes, yes. yeah i yeah. mean they're already setting her up you can already tell yeah. In episode like two. I'll say this. Yeah, for episodes like spying. episodes four through six. Just go watch that one episode of Proud Family. Remember the one with the rumor song? No one's you saying oh you train. Are you thinking of Veggie Tales with the rumor weed? Excuse me? What? I'm sorry, are you confusing <laughs> Proud Family with Veggie Tales? Am I the only person what? here who watched Proud Family? No, I, I, I watched it. I watched it, but it I haven't watched it in a long time, and I do not remember a One lot of One of the episodes. earliest It's also goddamn making a episodes. comeback. Yeah, when's that second season showing up? I can't remember if they were doing a full reboot or just a continuation. It's a continuation. Okay. Anyway, sorry. I feel like more people need to watch Proud Family now. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so, yeah, what's your answer, uh, uh, Gav? <laughs> uh, definitely... That I want to, like, continue watching it, but I'm just, like, hesitant on some of it because I know I've watched it in the past and it's, like, hasn't really grabbed my attention in the past. But, like, this time around I'm into it, so I don't know. Mm. I I really don't know. So it might be, like, a meh, but, like, also kind of cute. It's hard to say. But, yeah. Question for you. Me? If you were to have a watch buddy... Would you watch the next couple of episodes? Yes. Do you want to watch it together at some point? Because I kind of need motivation to watch it. Because I shit at watching things after the three episodes, unfortunately, for this. Sure, we can watch it together. Yay! Okay, my verdict is, like, light yay. Um, It's cute. And honestly, like, definitely a bit more refreshing for a show. Like, that's, like, a, supposed to be, like, a shoujo romance. I mean, I, again, I like to continue watching it, but I'm very terrible at, like, actually working up the motivation to actually yeah. put it back on. You're not, like, Envy, who's just gonna binge the whole thing. Listen, if I binge the whole thing, I will watch it and then be like, yeah, I did all of it, and now I feel, like, empty inside. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I personally don't like binging all that much, if I'm gonna be really Same. honest. Like, I'll get through a couple of episodes, and I'm just like, nope, okay, we're done for now, and then I'll take a break, and then I won't come back to it. I relate. Because <laughs> I get burned out on just the one thing. <laughs> anyway. I feel that, but I also crave the dopamine hit of binging, so That's I will fair. just accept that I'm going to crash. <laughs> I was gonna say, you binge everything. Yeah. I will have a dopamine crash, and then I will immediately forget everything that happened. Well, why don't we ask the opinion of our resident Time Lord Envy? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, I mean, obviously I'm going to finish watching it. I watched the first season. There's 13 episodes in the second season. I'm going to watch it, and I'm going to watch season three when it comes out this year. Like I said, I, for the most part, enjoy it a lot. I liked a lot of stuff about it. I like the main characters. I like the messaging i like you know the you know the, the 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 thing about you know her coming out of her shell it's just certain things with it. sometimes miscommunication in anime doesn't bother me and there's certain times it does and this is just one of those cases where some of the arcs were kind of just like i like you people i want good things for you so when you do stupid things or when you don't communicate properly it just makes me frustrated it's like no no stop it stop it so it's like a light yay for me right now. I I think it's a light yay for me. It was really cute, but I don't know. I got kind of depressed the more I watched it. No. I think it just hit kind of close to home. Mm. I It's been a good minute since I've overshared on this podcast. I used to have like debilitating, paralyzing social anxiety. 
and it's not half as bad as it used to be, but like people would try to talk to me and I just could not make words happen, which is not quite the issue that she's having here. I think that's a different anime called uh, Comey Can't Communicate. <laughs> yeah. So like pretty quickly people would be like, oh, she doesn't talk. That's kind of weird. Let's just avoid that. Like, I wasn't really bullied to my face. I knew they were talking about me, but, like, I didn't ever hear it, so it kind of didn't affect me. So, I don't know. Just, like, seeing the quiet freak girl get to, like, live out the fantasy of having friends, it just kind of sucked to feel like it was just a fantasy. Like, this could only happen in a show. I'm sorry, weren't you adopted by a group of extroverts? Like, one at a time. My one friend, I will not drop her name, but friend of the- Fuck you, Alex! Friend of the family, it's my best friend in high school, she- Um, (laughs) we were in a play together, and she was like, Oh, you look so sad sitting by yourself, I'm just going to sit with you. And then from that, I just clung on to her. And it's been like 15 years, and she can't get rid of me now. You said (laughs) clung on, like, she did not, like, oh, you're kind of, like, pathetic, and, like- scooped you up yeah that she did actually say to me she was like oh you're not as weird as everyone says you are you're just like not good with words i'm like yeah you you don't have to say it but yeah (laughs) (laughs) okay i'm gonna be the one who brings down the average score here i'm kind of like a nay here like a full nay in this it's not because it's bad it's just not my thing and this has validated what I felt like when it was, like, first coming out when we were, like, what, 12? We were 14. I wasn't. You're old. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you learned how to use words, but they're all mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it validated, like, what I originally thought. Where, like, it was big, but I'm like, I would definitely not really enjoy this, like, I feel like the characters were very cute and I think they had a lot of potential, but just the story itself is so drawn out and like not very, for something that's trying to portray itself as slice of life, like this is not stuff that would actually happen. No, for for sure. It's definitely not. Although I think it can get away with being drawn out because it's more of a, you're supposed to watch this week to week and yeah, not all in like, one go. Again, definitely, like, you can see where this was from a Jump magazine originally. Mm-hmm. Now, is it the popular kid adopts outcast that doesn't seem realistic? Or, like, just the... like no, the level gets... of miscommunication. Oh, okay. Because I was gonna say, as the... As Kaze the resident Haya, extrovert. <laughs> yeah. Um, as 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 the Kazehaya of this situation, like it happens, I've done it. The only reason I know my boyfriend is because he was the outcast and I was the hori <laughs> of the situation, the Kazehaya of the situation, and was like, You're my friend now, whether you like it or not. <laughs> Yeah, no, like, yeah. extroverts we are friends. adopting it is outcast and introverts happens. It it's does. It's more like, people don't communicate, like, how it is in the anime itself. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. No, I will, I will definitely give it that. I just know too many people who have gone through miscommunications when I was in friend groups when I was younger. So, I guess to me, it just kind of goes over my head. There's miscommunication and then there is people are making really insane leaps of logic that have like no actual reasoning behind them just because it needs some drama again also that listen you did not know the people that i hung out (laughs) with when i was in school they were constantly fighting and bickering and constantly not being friends with each other like every single month and then they'd be friends again within like the next month (laughs) So That's let's exhausting. just say that when, yes, it's the thing. Like when I say I'm like, yeah, no, I don't really think about it that way. It's because I literally watched it happen. <laughs> like 
the group bullying and all that, like, that's believable. Like, especially, like, Japan, where, like, you're expected to conform to a certain degree. Yeah. It's really the communication when it comes down to it. Also, again, like, romance is not my wheelhouse, so. Fair. Yeah, this month is gonna suck for you, huh? (laughs) (laughs) I thought, like, it wasn't just romance. Like, there was other stuff going on, but, uh, no, it do do appear to just be romance. Uh, There's, like, a lot of platonic stuff, too. Keeps them saying that. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see how platonic Platonic love is just as important. We'll see how platonic and or romantic it gets for next week. Because next week we're doing... Whose recommendation was this? Princess Jellyfish? I think that was Cozy's. Is that one particularly romantic? I don't know if it was a recommendation. I think you had it as like a potential thing. I mean, I'm... Someone had to bring it up. I think I might have mentioned it. Because I had read the manga. The manga's super funny. Okay, well, (laughs) hey, I'm down for that because... I was not laughing as much at this one, and I'm hoping to laugh again next time. And then after that, we got Naruko, The Crawling Love, and we'll see if I lose my recommendation privileges, much like Cece did. <laughs> and, yeah. Um, El, can I ask, where is Zom in this list? Where is what? Because we moved it, Zom 100, didn't we move it? Dude, that was from, like, like spooky month? back, yeah, that was a while ago, and it's I thought just, we moved it, it just is gone. We could bring it back oh. for a much later time, maybe, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. Is Zom 100 a, a romance? The, there is a romance part of it, but it's not a romance show. Okay. Yeah, you know what? Maybe we'll do zombie stuff for, for Halloween or something. We haven't really, like, nailed anything down yet, but... Yeah, maybe we can bring it back. Who knows? I don't know. But for now, I know Princess Jellyfish next week, Naruko after that, and then we got some special stuff for you coming up in March as well. So come back for all of that and more. I don't like how you phrased that. Well, that's how I phrased it. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell icon for notifications. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like, and if you haven't already, check out some of our previous episodes, our daily gaming videos, or our parody series, Madoka Magically Abridged. See you next time!